It looks like we're in store for a really nice sunset, but have you ever wondered where these pinks, reds, oranges, and yellows come from? Let's find out together in this episode all about the electromagnetic spectrum. Different kinds of light are all around you every day, but most are invisible to our human eyes. Light can be broken up into different types. We call the full known range the electromagnetic spectrum. This means that even when it's dark, light is all around us. In this episode, we discovered that sound travels in waves. Light can also be thought of as a wave, an electromagnetic wave. Unlike sound waves that need something to travel through, like water or air, electromagnetic waves are able to travel through emptiness or a vacuum. Ripples in a pond are good examples of waves. If you toss in a rock, you disturb the water, causing ripples or disturbances in the pond that travel to the edges. Waves move in two ways, longitudinally and transversely. Transverse waves oscillate in a direction perpendicular to their motion. Our pond ripples, for instance, oscillate up and down but move horizontally towards the edge of the pond. Because the ripples oscillate perpendicular to the horizontal motion towards the edge, they can be classified as transverse waves. Electromagnetic waves are formed by changing electronic and magnetic fields, which is why we call them electromagnetic waves. The size of a wave is called its wavelength, and how often it comes by is its frequency. Different variations of light are all waves. They just have different wavelengths and frequencies. When you reduce the wavelength of light, the more energy is packed into one pulse of that light, and so the energy goes up. So the higher the frequency, or how many crests go by per second, the higher the energy of that light. So long wavelengths have low energies and short wavelengths have high energies. If you're still here liking this video, let us know and hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Visible light is actually just a thin strand of electromagnetic radiation. From 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers, the light we can see is just going to be white light. So how do we get these different colors of light? We can break this white light down with a prism. At first, we just see this white light. As the light travels at an angle toward the glass, it will slow down as it enters into the glass. When this happens, the light bends. We call this refraction. Depending on the wavelength of light, it's going to bend a different amount. The rainbow we perceive is actually visible light in order of its energy. At one side of the rainbow is low energy light we see as red, then orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, the highest energy light we see. When we see, light travels through the cornea, the pupil, and then the lens. This light is refracted or bent twice before it shines on the back of the eye. The energy of light stimulates a receptor at the back of our eye called the retina. The retina is only sensitive to this visible light range on the spectrum. Inside our retina are special receptors called rods and cones. Rods measure brightness, or how much light there is, and cones are in charge of what color of light we see. This is possible because some cones are specialized for light that has a longer wavelength, and other cones are more interested in shorter wavelength light. These special receptors create a nerve impulse that eventually goes to the brain, allowing us to perceive what we are seeing. So if we don't have those modified cells to pick up light or electromagnetic radiation, then we don't see or only see some colors or some amount of light. So why all the reds and oranges at sunset? Colors of the sunset result from a phenomenon called scattering, or molecules and small particles in the atmosphere changing direction of light waves. The short wavelengths, blue and violet, are scattered much more by the molecules in the air than the other colors in the spectrum. They are higher frequency waves, so they're hitting these scattering particles more frequently. This keeps them from reaching our eyes. Higher frequency blue and violet light easily reach our eyes from all directions on a clear day. At sunset, 
Sunlight has to pass through more air than during the day when you are closer to and facing the sun. More atmosphere means more molecules to scatter the violet and blue light away from your eyes. The other wavelengths are disturbed or scattered less, so they continue on their way to your eyes. As we've already learned, red has the longest wavelength of any visible light. At sunset, the sun is red at the horizon, and the clouds can show brilliant reds, pinks, oranges, and yellows. Like we said earlier, visible light is just a small section here in the middle of the spectrum. When you go below the red, you get infrared below the red. Infrared waves are just longer than the red light in the visible spectrum. We cannot see infrared radiation, but it can be felt as heat. Many snakes such as rattlesnakes or pit vipers can hunt even in total darkness. This is because the heat sensitive pits on each side of the snake's head can detect infrared radiation from prey. This information is then sent to the same area of the snake's brain that processes impulses from vision. We can use engineered technology to see infrared waves. Now that the sun has set, let's use an attachment for my camera to see if there's anything here in the dark that's giving off heat. This is what our imaging will look like. And this is what our human eyes are seeing. It's dark. Oh, I think this is a rabbit. Yep, there it goes. Here's another one. Can you see it right there? Not sure what this is. A mouse or a rat, maybe? Oh, you can see it move right there. There it goes. Lower than infrared waves are microwaves. These are the waves that cook your food in a microwave. We really got creative with the name there. The frequency or energy of the invisible waves inside of your microwave oven is just perfect for vibrating water molecules, which heats up the wet parts of your food. Radio waves are the lowest energy waves on the electromagnetic spectrum. Radio waves transmit the music you hear on the radio. Again, original. They are also used for radar, satellite communications, and television broadcasting. Now, let's look at the other side of visible light. On the other side of violet, you get ultraviolet or beyond violet. The waves in this direction have a reduced wavelength of light, which means they have far more energy. Ultraviolet waves have energy high enough for the waves to penetrate cells and cause them damage. Too much ultraviolet radiation can lead to sunburn. Some organisms can also pick up UV light. Some flowers only have patterns that are visible in this wavelength, conveniently directing insects like bees to the pollen. To our human eyes, this flower just looks like this. But if I use an ultraviolet flashlight, we can get an idea of what some insects might be able to see. X-rays have wavelengths with enough energy to pass through skin and flesh, but are stopped by dense materials such as bones, which makes them really good for examining bones. Gamma rays have the shortest wavelengths, the highest frequencies, and therefore the most energy. These waves are the most damaging to tissues. They are difficult to stop you would need a three to four foot thick concrete wall to stop them. The next time you appreciate a good sunset or eat some popcorn, you can thank the electromagnetic spectrum. And if you want to learn more science, you can check out this video next.